Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to classic Chinese comfort food dishes with a shot at a Cantonese crispy beef chow mein made using super thin Hong Kong style fresh egg noodles. Now, a quick review for those who are not familiar a traditional chow mein, as we all know and love it, by definition must include some form of fry to the noodle, not unlike how we made our Panda Express chow mein, hot and spicy chow mein, tomato beef chow mein, and a few others. If the dish did not include a fry to the noodles, then it would otherwise be a lo mein, which is a different dish altogether. So, to accomplish this for our version today, we're going to be using a super thin Hong Kong style noodle made with a high content of egg, allowing for the noodles to puff up and fry very nicely in the wok. This in turn is going to yield for us a nice crispy crunchy texture to our noodle. Bay Area locals may recognize this as the same type of noodle that we have used in our crispy garlic noodles at the Wu Can Cook pop up. Finally, to go along with all of this, we'll also be assembling a crispy beef made using flank steak and a pinch of baking soda in a technique known as velveting to help us tenderize what would otherwise be a pretty tough cut of meat without some fun food science trickery. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we're kicking things off here first with some fundamental aromatic veggies for our stir fry coming up. This is going to be 4 cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by 1 inch or about 1 tablespoon of fine minced ginger that we're setting aside for our wok fry. Then rounding out our veggies today, I'm going with some baby bok choy, onion, and bell pepper for our stir fry. Other common additions might include things like carrot, bean sprout, cabbage, or truly whatever is fresh in the season that you happen to be cooking this in. In any case, for our baby bok choy though, I'm starting by slicing these up into quarters before giving a quick rinse in cold water. Not unlike a Brussels sprout, you'll want to make sure to slice through the root with your bok choy so that it doesn't end up falling apart in the fry. Next up is one half of a sweet white onion, which I'm dicing up with the root end still attached to aid in achieving a nice large dice, followed finally by my bell pepper, which I'm also only using about half of today. As with most stir fries that contain a lot of veggies like this one, we'll want to be careful with how much of each ingredient that we use, otherwise we'll be at risk of overloading the wok. Moving on to the beef in our crispy beef chow mein, today I'm going with some flank steak which is more or less going to be the cut used in pretty much any Chinese dish containing beef. That said though, skirt or top cut sirloin would also work well and should be in a similar price range too. In any case, all three of these are pretty tough and chewy cuts of beef so we want to take a few steps to help us achieve a nice tender bite to our steak. First off, I'm starting by slicing our beef into strips against the grain, which as you can see with a flank steak should be pretty easy to identify because the grain is very prominent. Once our steak is nice and sliced up, I'm cleaning up my cutting board and setting our steak aside for a quick moment while I dissolve a half teaspoon of baking soda in cold water, then combining with our steak for 15 minutes. This is a process that you'll come across in a lot of Chinese cooking known as velveting, which is essentially making use of the alkaline in our baking soda to achieve a more tender piece of beef. Baking soda, however, does also have a metallic aftertaste, so once our 15 minutes are finished, we're going to rinse off our beef in cold water, then drain off the excess liquid to make sure that we don't have baking soda going into our marinade. This today is going to be comprised of a pretty simple combination of 4 tablespoons of soy sauce and a half teaspoon each of white pepper and cornstarch. Meanwhile, while our steak marinates, we're going to move right along to our sauce element next, which is going to focus primarily on developing deep, bold, and rich umami qualities derived from the holy trinity of oyster sauce, dark soy sauce, and black vinegar. So, up first here is 4 tablespoons of soy sauce and a single tablespoon of Shaoxing wine to start, followed by a single tablespoon of Doubanjiang chili paste for a bit of heat. Then, as promised, rounding this all out is a single tablespoon each of dark soy sauce, black vinegar, and oyster sauce going in, which we're mixing to combine. Over on the stove, we're starting off with a quick par steam to our noodles to help us achieve a tender bite to our noodle, otherwise they'll be too crunchy. Yes, believe it or not, it is actually possible for something to be too crunchy. 
I've got about a cok of water boiling in my wok with a steam basket on top. Then I'm adding a pound of my Hong Kong egg noodles and covering to steam for five minutes before we proceed to then par fry these in the wok over medium heat for an additional three to five minutes. This is gonna yield for us a simultaneously tender and crunchy noodle. And before you freak out, yes, that is a lot of oil, about a cup's worth, because without a lot of oil, you're gonna end up burning those noodles. Not to fear though, because we're also going to drain off most of that oil before plating, so it won't end up in your final dish. Moving on to our beef next, I'm reheating my wok over medium heat again, then adding an additional four tablespoons of peanut oil and giving one more long yao. Then here's our flank steak going in about 20 pieces at a time, searing undisturbed for two minutes before tossing with the wok tilted downward for a bit of smoky wok hay. I'm repeating this with my remaining flank steak, then removing and reheating our wok over high heat this time so that we may complete our third and final batch cook. This is an additional four tablespoons of peanut oil going in, followed by our garlic and ginger going in for 15 seconds until nice and fragrant. Then next is our veggies. Here's my onion and bell pepper going in for a quick one minute head start, followed by my bok choy. We're tossing this to combine for about two minutes before returning our beef back to the wok, followed by my sauce element plus a quarter cup of water. I'm tossing this all to combine, then adding a cornstarch slurry comprised of two tablespoons of cornstarch dissolved in water to thicken things up. Back over on the cutting board, I'm serving this all up with a bed of our crispy Hong Kong noodles to start. As promised, you'll notice the majority of that oil is left behind in the bowl. Then over top is our beef stir fry, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, those following along may know that this is certainly not our first attempt at a chow mein. I think we've done something like four or five different chow mein dishes now, mainly because, well, it's an incredibly versatile concept. That said, this is the first time that we have achieved a noodle of this level of crispiness, which truly sets the entire dish apart. The crunchy texture to our noodle adds a nice bite to our stir fry without being overwhelmingly dry or cracker like thanks to our par steam, which is often the issue that I have with Hong Kong style noodles like this one. Then, to pair with this, our beef is juicy and tender courtesy of our velveting process, with a rich umami packed sauce element that pairs really nicely with our crispy noodle bed underneath. Finally, I feel like I mention this with every stir fry that we make, but it bears repeating. As with any stir fry, you should use the veggies that are fresh and in season for your own attempts. I went with a few of my favorites here because I thought that the leafy greens of our bok choy would pair nicely with the gravy like texture of our sauce element, but adapt and adjust for your own attempts. Okay, so that's it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series that we've been doing that's dedicated to classic Chinese dishes, so definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. For the Bay Area locals, the Wu Kang Cook Fried Rice Pop Up is now at Wondrous Brewing in Emeryville every Thursday through Sunday, so come by and say hi if you can. More about that at slash eats. Also, a fun update we've got t shirts. I'm super excited to be partnering with my good friends at Polly Walk Prince to make these sweet Wu Kang Cook shirts. They're super soft and comfortable, and also there's a picture of me on the back, which is crazy. We're selling these at the Wu Kang Cook pop up, or you can head over to wukangcook.com slash shop to grab one from the online store, too. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice, YouTubers, and I'll see you soon. Bye.